introduce one of the most sought after and powerful real estate consultants in the Philippines, Ms. Sheila Lopian. Thank you for coming, Thank you, Ms. Brother. Sheila. Okay. This is a very exciting topic mm -hmm. because uh, we are going to talk about the uh, um, state of the real estate in the Philippines. But my first question would be, the landscape mm -hmm. is not it is very different maybe 10 years ago. Can you recall what are the major <laughs> developments in the past 10 years? Okay, so 10 years ago, that was actually the time that I formally entered the real estate market in the Philippines. So that mm -hmm. was in 2008. Mm -hmm. And back then, the outsourcing industry, the BPO industry, mm -hmm. was not that big. It was starting mm -hmm. to grow. Um, it was from that time, and then afterwards, there was this global financial crisis, right? Mm -hmm. and yes. So there were a lot of problems all over the world. Fortunately for the Philippines, we didn't feel that because when they were trying to downsize elsewhere, the first thing that they did was to cut costs. And that was the time that they started bringing a lot of business here in the Philippines, and we got a lot of back office work. Actually, that's... Uh that's the very interesting there because mm -hmm. uh, we were we, we we were very special in the sense that it is the Philippines that has showed resilience yes, when that very happened. Resilient. What mm -hmm. uh, what is it that the Philippines had before that you know made yeah. it really resilient to mm -hmm. make sure that we are not heavily affected? affected. Well, number one, we're not a big financial you know, country ca capital. Mm -hmm. So the Philippines um, has the big advantage, big population, very young. The the age is what? Middle um, average is 24 years old. Mm -hmm. And almost everybody can speak English. Okay. So that's why we're the number one call center in the world now okay. because of that. So that's our big advantage. And labor cost, of course, is mm -hmm. very affordable compared to other neighboring countries. So mm -hmm. it's, it's quite natural that they've um, grown here in the Philippines, they can easily hire, they can easily expand and get the right talent. And that's mm -hmm. our big advantage. They're coming here because of the Filipino, the talent that we have here. Mm -hmm. So like what you said, resilient, hardworking, mm -hmm. young, can speak English well, can communicate well. And we're very adaptive to the American um, lifestyle. And most of the call centers and BPOs back then when it started are mostly from the U.S. Mm -mm. So after that financial crisis, mm -hmm. how, how was it? recovering how, how was the recovery of the real estate industry mm -hmm. um, what were uh, the things that were introduced you mm -hmm. know to make sure that it will finally pick up well luckily back then we didn't really feel it mm -hmm. because when there was this um, you know the global financial crisis mm -hmm. in just a few months a lot of companies came in the Philippines mm -hmm. and started their big mm -hmm. back office here so the likes of JP Morgan Deutsche okay. Bank Correct. Bank of America all of them started to put up shops here mm -hmm. and the Philippines the government back then were very supportive of that mm -hmm. um, and that's why we've seen the growth in that industry aside from the overseas Filipino workers the mm -hmm. BPO revenue started to grow from that time up to now mm -hmm. okay so we are uh, we are talking and we are looking at um, as you mentioned of the of the government support mm -hmm. it's more aggressive now because of the build 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 program yes. of the government mm -hmm. so what do you think would be the impact of this infrastructure program uh, to your industry? Um, they are saying that it's going to be the golden uh, age, of age of infrastructure. Yes. So I'm sure it's going mm -hmm. to be more attractive. Yes. What's your outlook on this? Very positive. In fact, that's what the Philippines really need. Mm -hmm. Build, build, build. We have to support that because that's what we need, the infrastructure so for these big companies to expand here, they need good infrastructure. That means mm -hmm. good internet connection, phone lines, mm -hmm. roads that do not flood and easily <laughs> okay. accessible. Correct. So even in the provincial areas, that's what we really need. So if we continue with this program, then I think the Filipinos and the whole country will really benefit from it. So you'll see a lot of growth not just in Metro Manila but outside Metro Manila and provincial areas as well. Mm -hmm. As long as there's talent and the infrastructure is good, business will come in. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned about Metro Manila mm -hmm. and the neighboring provinces. Mm -hmm. uh, 
In terms of uh, uh, landscape in Metro Manila, it has dramatically changed. Yes. Uh, there are some areas before, like mm -hmm. grassy lots, yes. and then Nothing finally, there. it's now you know uh, very you know, high rise condominiums mm -hmm. and all that. And uh, yes, and the townships. Yes. So, um, do we still see um, development here in Metro Manila? Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, can you cite specific uh, uh, growth areas? Mm -hmm. Like I understand there are now new mm -hmm. uh, CBDs mm -hmm. uh, being developed mm -hmm. by uh, some properties. Mm -hmm. Before, it used to be just the Makati area, yes, which is considered yes. as the CBD. Mm -hmm. But can you cite other developments in Metro mm -hmm. Manila in terms of uh, other growth areas, areas here? Yeah. Well, Metro Manila, of course, is the main uh, hub. Mm -hmm. And then after Metro Manila, there's Cebu, okay. which is like, it's not a provincial area. It's really a city now. Mm -hmm. And then other provincial parts. And of course, Davao, because the current administration is supporting that mm -hmm. part of Correct. the country. Mm -hmm. However, in Metro Manila alone, you'll see that, of course, Makati will always be there. Mm -hmm. But BGC has surpassed, in terms of number of square meters, in terms mm -hmm. of number of office space, BGC now is the biggest in terms of wow. footprint. Mm -hmm. um, and there is of Ortigas will always be there, but it's it's spread all over the country. If you mm -hmm. go to the Bay Area, mm -hmm. it's a different part of town. A lot of yes. Chinese are there, so Correct. the developments there, it's it's like the hot uh, spot right now. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you go, the condominiums, the offices are being taken left and right, mm -hmm. and that's because of the rise in the gaming, the Chinese mm -hmm. industry, the Chinese um, investors. Who are coming here in the Philippines and and taking lots of real estate requirement. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned about the different mm -hmm. projects and markets. Like if I am now um, um, a major investor, mm -hmm. I am a global brand. Yes. Uh, and then I will ask you. I'll I'll ask for an office space. Do mm -hmm. you normally? Present the profile of its uh, of the of the location, like you mentioned in the Bay Area, that yeah. would be the Chinese market. <laughs> in BGC, that yeah. that's the younger uh, population. Mm -hmm. Is that how you sell it? Well, depending on what the objective of that company is when they enter the market, but most of them would usually start either in Makati, mm -hmm. BGC, and Ortiga. So mm -hmm. those are the three main. CBDs, mm -hmm. and once they have established their, you know, um, first base there, they would mm -hmm. start to grow, and mm -hmm. they would either go to Alabang, Quezon City, Bay Area, mm -hmm. which we call the tier two cities. Mm -hmm. um, but land is becoming scarce right now, and therefore a lot of um, most of the big plots of lands are being developed, like what you mentioned, the township developments mm -hmm. wherein you have the hotel, the mm -hmm. office, the shopping area mm -hmm. in one go. Mm -hmm. So you need not travel from one city to another. Everything mm -hmm. is in one place. And mm -hmm. because of the traffic, it's mm -hmm. best to be in one area, right? Mm -hmm. If you're in Alabang, you don't want to go to BGC anymore or mm -hmm. Makati anymore mm -hmm. because of the current traffic. Mm -hmm. And has it changed your way of marketing? Has mm -hmm. it changed? Because we are noticing that there is also a change in the behavior, in the yes. lifestyle of people. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, the millennials or the call center agents yes. who practically stay in yes, the uh, office business. already. Mm -hmm. So, what are these behavioral changes? Mm -hmm. What are these new lifestyle changes, changes. that has changed also? Mm -hmm. Which, as a property developer yeah. or a consultant, yes. you have to know and you have to advise mm -hmm. your client. What are yeah. these changes? Well, what we've seen so far, again, because of the growth in the BPO industry, and then mm -hmm. back then, the OFW remittances, of course, they're sending their money here from abroad. So most families would buy a condo unit. Mm -hmm. And even the millennials also, they'll have their small units. That's why mm -hmm. there's this growth in condominium market, right? Okay. Developers are into that, catering to the BPO industry. But now, there's also that Chinese market segment. Yes. So yes. Most and it's of, going bigger and getting bigger. it's getting bigger and bigger. And they're mm -hmm. taking space like in bulk, the whole building. It's not like, wow. you know, just one unit. It's like one whole floor or one whole building. Mm -hmm. That, that you know, big. And... Most developers are taking advantage of that. Mm -hmm. So they're building properties to address the requirements of the mm -hmm. Chinese um, people who are coming in here mm -hmm. working in the gaming companies. The OF, of course, the OFW mm -hmm. workers mm -hmm. and the BPO uh, workers as well. 
if other than that there's also this um which we call it's like a dorm type condo dorm yeah, type which okay. is be becoming very popular we've mm -hmm. seen that in the fringes of cbds okay. because it's so expensive to well not really expensive but it's more convenient for them to stay near their workplace, right? Mm -hmm. So they'll just rent a small apartment. Okay. Four of them will share. Mm -hmm. And that's growing also. It's that that's what we call condominium share um mm -hmm. sharing of resources mm -hmm. like the Airbnb Uber oh, okay. types. But which segment of the market is still the biggest mm -hmm. and what uh, segment of the market uh, shows a lot of potential? Are we Still looking at uh, luxurious houses mm -hmm. and offices, mm -hmm. or uh, a lot of these companies are very practical in the sense that mm -hmm. uh, they are not necessarily uh, looking mm -hmm. into these amenities, mm -hmm. but just on the location per se mm -hmm. for their company. Well, for office in the office market, we see the trend right now is to go, to have green building, you no know, some lead features. So okay. a lot of um, developers who are in the Main CBD are, of course, upgrading their projects and mm -hmm. doing lead accredited buildings. When you say lead accredited, mm -hmm. and when you say green uh, it has, companies, you know, green features inside the like building. Like some of this would me would mean. Um, well, what features? Instead of just having a small window, they'll mm -hmm. have all glass panel wherein sunlight can come in, ah, okay. fresh air can come in. Therefore, mm -hmm. the people who are working inside the building are healthier. Mm -hmm. There's this less sickly syndrome. Mm -hmm. um, and that's very important because big companies, the Fortune 500 would look for those types of buildings that are somehow environmentally mm -hmm. conscious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in the residential market, the trend right now, of course, is to have many amenities inside the the building mm -hmm. if not it should be near an area wherein everything is just nearby mm -hmm. the mall the hospital the schools transportation mm -hmm. it's still the same it's the key is making it more and more attractive and convenient and fun for those who will stay in the area mm -hmm. so with all these uh, changes in mm -hmm. lifestyle and behavior, like mm -hmm. you know, one very exciting really is the green uh, features because yes. I because I remember uh, attending one meeting one mm -hmm. time and then suddenly the light went off automatically. Oh yes, that's so, scary. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's because uh, there has to be movement. Yes. So if if, if the, the system does not uh, sense, ident sense there. the movement, mm -hmm. so it will automatically shut, shut down, down the yes. uh, so. Uh, are we uh, looking at more expensive rates uh, because of depends these features? On location. It depends on location and quality of mm -hmm. the building. Um, if it's just the regular BPO companies, if they're not in the main CBD mm -hmm. and the rent is low, of course, you don't expect to have all those features. Mm -hmm. But if it's in the main CBD like Makati, Ortigas, Fort Bonifacio, then most of these buildings are becoming what we call iconic landmark mm -hmm. buildings. Right. And you'll see that kind of development. Like what you see in the first mm -hmm. world country in Hong Kong, Singapore, mm -hmm. in Australia. Mm -hmm. And that's why I like what we do because we see the developments happening, mm -hmm. you know, compared to 10 years ago. Philippines right now is different. Mm -hmm. It's booming, it's growing, you see a lot of action anywhere you go. Correct. Uh, before we go into a break, mm -hmm. uh, my, my question would be, uh, you you travel around the world yes. and you see a lot of developments in other countries. Mm -hmm. Do you see the Philippines adapting to this uh, new developments, innovations mm -hmm. as far as real estate is Good. concerned in yeah. terms of maybe innovation mm -hmm. and some uh, new ideas, mm -hmm. you know, that would really uh, make the Philippines ready for any investor mm -hmm. to come here? Well, what I see right now, um, the mall, the retail market, mm -hmm. they're adapting and mm -hmm. they're changing. The Filipinos were mall goers. Mm -hmm. That's what's unique about us. When you go to the U.S., Europe, they mm -hmm. don't really go to the mall anymore. Mm -hmm. Most of them, they buy online, right? Okay. However, uh, however, in the Philippines, because I think of the humid weather, a lot of us would still prefer to go to the mall. Mm -hmm. That's why we have big malls. In fact, Four malls around the world, the biggest ones, are from the Philippines. Wow. So thanks to, of course, the big developer, SM. Okay. And <laughs> wow. <laughs> and where of, are they located? Um, MOA. Okay. Um, yeah. EDSA. Okay. You know, those big mm, in uh, Asia. projects. In Asia. Okay, correct. And then, yeah, in the Philippines. In the Philippines. They're found in the okay, Philippines. Yes. 
So what we see right now is they're creating experience for the people who are going inside the mall, which mm -hmm. we see also in the first world country mm -hmm. where you end when you enter a mall or a facade, mm -hmm. they are ensuring that you'll have a good feeling. So they're after the experience so that people will come back, right? Mm -hmm. So we see that also happening here. So when you go to a high-end mall, mm -hmm. you'll, you know, you can smell. Mm -hmm. There's fresh, like flowers, air mm -hmm. freshener there. And activities happening inside, attracting people to come back. Mm -hmm. Family activities, things to do. So we see that in other countries and it's already here in the Philippines. More from Ms. Sheila Lobian when we come back. You're still watching Open for Business here on EagleNewsLive.com. We'll be back. Open for business here on EagleNewsLive.com, and we are with Ms. Sheila Lopien, the regional director of uh, JLL. It's an exciting um, uh, discussion because, as you mentioned, uh, we notice that uh, the Philippines is at par with mm -hmm. the best uh, uh, in the world, specifically in real estate, in innovations. Now. We see and hear news also of um, some of the factors mm -hmm. that may hinder uh, further development. Mm -hmm. We are eyeing uh, a growth rate of mm -hmm. uh, uh, to the level of I think six, six or seven, seven. percent. Um, there are some issues on. Um, I, I also talked with some CEOs um, and met. Uh, also, he guessed that Richard Mills was here yeah. and he talked about. Uh, uh, the reaction of uh, mm -hmm. CEOs with the train law. Yeah. What do you think would mm -hmm. be the impact of this new mm -hmm. um, government uh, projects, mm -hmm. policies mm -hmm. with real estate? So far, well, we hear a lot of that. However, in the uh, again, I'm going back to the outsourcing industry. Mm -hmm. The main drivers of um, them growing here in the Philippines are coming here because of the savings that they get in the labor market and mm -hmm. the labor cost mm -hmm. so yes there are some changes in the taxes and all mm -hmm. however when they look at the overall picture mm -hmm. the philippines is still a very good market for them to do business mm -hmm. so they save a lot on the labor costs mm -hmm. they say you know one american is like f equivalent of four filipinos mm -hmm. and talented yes. high, is the four. <laughs> high edu highly educated filipinos right and very hard working mm -hmm always smiling never complaining mm -hmm. well we complain but not that much compared to our other asian neighbors yes <laughs> so there are a lot of um advantage t um, still that we see mm -hmm. that i think will not really have a big impact on whatever um mm -hmm. you know that tax train mm -hmm. law that we'll see in the next mm -hmm. few in terms of the estate taxes mm -hmm. we heard that it's very positive mm -hmm. because it's lower compared mm -hmm. to before and therefore there might be some families who are landed who mm -hmm. might start to consider selling developing them mm -hmm. which is good for us we'll see a lot of um, more growth in that aspect also in that market you know well landed families trying to improve or sell or build something on their own mm -hmm. also in, in terms of uh, 
the Filipinos' participation or, or uh, interest with real mm -hmm. estate. Uh, one of my reports earlier was that they are now looking at investments uh, specifically for OFWs, mm -hmm. and one of uh, this would be real estate related. Mm -hmm. Do you feel this already, Ms. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. For Filipinos, it's natural for us to buy a property. Mm -hmm. We want to have a lot, a okay. land, right? House and lot, the Filipino dream. I think it's every. Mm -hmm. Filipino dream, right? To have their own house and lot someday. Mm -hmm. So it's it's always there. And we see a lot of developers addressing that part segment of the market. Mm -hmm. The affordable housing or socialized housing aside mm -hmm. from the condominium market market growing also in the CBD and developed areas. So it's it's really affecting the Filipinos right now. And in a growing population like us, mm -hmm. growing middle class, Mm -hmm. the the first thing that they'll do of course after getting married they'll buy a house they'll buy mm -hmm. and and that real estate is always benefiting from that mm -hmm. okay speaking of of other growth drivers mm -hmm. um we are there are uh the, the major ones that were identified is of course number one bpo mm -hmm. uh, market uh, uh do you see that it's we hear news also because of the yeah. um, some policies of yes. the U.S. That's mm -hmm. uh, that's going to slow down, or somehow um, we will be affected by the uh, U.S.-China China. trade war. <laughs> so, what do, what is your outlook yeah. on the BPO sector? Would yes. st would it still continue mm -hmm. generating or getting mm -hmm. more uh, locations mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with the uh, uh, real estate property properties? Well, last year, um, mm -hmm. it's we've seen a little slowdown in the take up of the outsourcing industry, okay. and that's natural because of what you mentioned the the tension between China, U.S., and Trump there. Mm -hmm. However, this year, half of this year, we've seen growth again, mm -hmm. and big brands have entered the market and started putting up their own um, offices as well. Mm -hmm. So we see that there are some correction. Mm -hmm. I feel that it will still continue. Aside from that, there's another big market that have entered the Philippines, and that's mm -hmm. the Chinese mm -hmm. gaming industry. And there, that's why and, we. And it's not only in Metro Manila, it's right? It's all over the Philippines. Okay. Um, specifically, well, right now, as I've said, the Bay Area is very, very mm -hmm. hot because yes. of all the gaming and the Chinese um, people are. <laughs> Concentrated that there. Area. Okay. Um, and and you will see that because in in the real estate market we monitor the rentals, mm -hmm, the prices right. of land. Correct. The Bay Area from what eight hundred pesos per square as Two. the highest. Right now they're doing one thousand five hundred pesos wow. per square meter. More so that's double. almost, almost double, double. Yes. in less than a year. And that's because wow. of the demand. It's mm -hmm. always supply and demand. Mm -hmm. Supply is getting limited but the demand is getting bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. And it's the same story also that we see in other area. Mm -hmm. So as long as there's demand, land values, and the rentals also are going up. Mm -hmm. And it's a consistent one. It's been increasing since 2010. So wow. there's a steady increase. In terms of supply, when you look at the number of square meters that's available in the market, it's mm -hmm. also very tight. Almost mm -hmm. all the offices that are built are mm -hmm. fully leased, taken, wow. and the price of uh, land also is also increasing every year. Mm -hmm. yes. So you have to buy properties, <laughs> you have to buy land if you want to Correct. invest. Correct. Another uh, growth driver is, of mm -hmm. course, tourism, because, yes. um, of course, the data that we got uh, was that, of course, the, the mm -hmm. tourists are increasing, but, yes. you know, there is more potential. Like, for mm -hmm. example, I think I heard from one of our um, guests that uh, from Russia alone, you know, yeah. uh, only 4,000 uh, come here. Yeah. But in Thailand, that's 40,000. So there's yeah. really a big room yes. uh, for growth. How do you see tourism mm -hmm. um, making an impact to uh, yeah. real estate? Is it 
or is there going to be a big movement mm -hmm. with the tourism sector as well for tourism uh, for real estate yeah definitely it's actually the for me it's the third leg of the philippine economy no mm -hmm. after the filipino ofw remittances okay. there's the bpo okay. and the third one is the tourism industry which is steadily okay. growing mm -hmm. and what we really need is the infrastructure that's why i I'm very uh, supportive of the build, build, build project mm -hmm. because to go from, you know, just Manila to Boracay before, mm -hmm. you'll experience all modes of transportation. Mm -hmm. We have all the best, you know, beaches, locations here in the Philippines. And we Filipinas are very hospitable. Mm -hmm. The problem is it's so challenging to get from one point to another. Because of the infrastructure, it's so hard, right? Mm -hmm. Unlike in other countries, it's so easy to get to Bali, to, to Phuket mm -hmm. in Thailand. Mm -hmm. So if we will have that in the Philippines, then you'll see the opportunities there, the mm -hmm. growth that we can experience. Right now, when you look at tourism, the, the growth that we've experienced is in the hotel industry. Mm -hmm. The Correct. hotel industry is booming. All the big brands are in the Philippines already. When you go to Fort Bonifacio, there's Shangri-La, mm -hmm. Grand Hyatt in Makati and they're not just in Metro Manila they're in the provincial areas as well mm -hmm. businessman's hotel is growing so mm -hmm. that's because of the tourism market not just international but the domestic market as well mm -hmm. Filipinos they love to travel nowadays and it's cheaper to travel and mm -hmm. therefore there is this growth in that real estate part of the market the mm -hmm. tourism market the hotel the mm -hmm. Um, we call it businessman's hotel mm -hmm. and five star hotels as well. I have a lot of things to still ask, but mm -hmm. let me leave real estate for a okay. while. Uh, I'm very much interested with your uh, brand of social entrepreneurship because uh, I I notice mm -hmm. you uh, are very active with the European Chamber, specifically with mm -hmm. the women, women sector, business, women yeah. in business. Yes. Can you tell us? I know mm -hmm. how do you how do you still find time and um, you know come up with these yeah. projects and mm -hmm. what do you do with the mm -hmm. women sector that you think will mm -hmm. also empower them yeah. uh, being leaders in business okay so as the chair of the european chamber of commerce women in business mm -hmm. it's um it's a platform actually okay. wherein we support somehow we so we do our best to encourage women mm -hmm if they're in the corporate world to grow to grow inside the corporate world or mm -hmm. to have their own business also mm -hmm. and on a regular basis we come up with activities wherein they can meet successful career women or mm -hmm. successful business women and learn from them mm -hmm. we do have some mentorships mm -hmm. training programs or networking just a regular yeah, networking. so it, it, will, are, are there business matching as well that's happening there well inside the networking definitely oh, okay. yes when they meet people they can exchange okay. ideas collaborate come up with activities mm -hmm. but for me the best part there is really you know having this young lady young women mm -hmm. dream big meet mm -hmm. the successful women and mm -hmm. have this idea that someday I want to be like her. Mm -hmm. I, I want to work hard or I want to do this and someday I'm going to be like that. So mm -hmm. that's what we want to inspire young women to also dream big in life mm -hmm. and do something that would benefit not just their, mm -hmm. of course, themselves, but the environment, the community that they're in. Mm -hmm. We've seen your profile that was flashed earlier and uh, you were uh, really an achiever. So, oh, thank you uh, <laughs> with, with with the with the other uh, mm -hmm. leaders, specifically women, what can you share uh, in terms of uh, what are your insights mm -hmm. in um, corporate development? How uh, how will they be able to uh, really grow and mm -hmm. create an impact in a you know male dominated <laughs> real estate business or in any industry or I in think. any industry uh, well number one they have to like what they're doing right okay. so I've right. been saying this so many times you have to love what you do mm -hmm. in any industry mm -hmm. because Correct. if you don't then you'll you will not have the passion mm -hmm. to do it to learn and be the best in that segment or in that industry mm -hmm. so in what I do I'm very fortunate because I don't feel that being a woman is a disadvantage. In fact, mm -hmm. I always feel that it's an advantage to be a woman <laughs> in a male-dominated uh, industry like mine. Um, we can charm people. <laughs> but aside from that, I, I think when you work hard, 
mm-hmm. and you like what you're doing, you will really study it, right? And you'll mm-hmm. be good at it. Mm-hmm. And um, number, the other advice I think would be, you know, you have to learn how to deal with different kinds of people. Mm-hmm. It's a people business. You talk to people. So if you don't know how to talk and relate to them, then it's going to mm-hmm. be hard. Okay. So uh, I think like with our other guests, we will request them to come back and talk more and discuss more about uh, this topic, specifically with Ms. Hila Lobian's topic, which is the state of the real estate in the Philippines. And it's uh, a very exciting, solid sector in the Philippines, which we think is going to be... Um, uh, will contribute more to uh, the um, economic development of the country. And thank you, Ms. Sheila, thank for you, uh, coming you. over. We hope that you'll be back. And um, we'll be back after these reminders here on eaglenewslive.com. Stay with us.